Mac, heads up. Bob is on the roof. That's fine, thanks, Andy. Hey, Kate, bear with me. Hey, it's gonna get a little noisy here. We gotta clear out some mines. Take your time. Just let me know when you can talk. Hello there, and welcome to the next episode of the Remnants of War campaign on Armor 3. We are continuing right where we left off, and it looks like we are back in present-day Oreo Castle before we go to the next retrospective that will tell us more about the history of this now destroyed and abandoned town. Let's take a walk. So right now, that vehicle is clearing the road of mines by simply driving up the road, which is an interesting way of doing things, I have to admit. But what are we going to do now? Let me have a quick look. Our tasks are to investigate the guerrilla armory. Okay, the road safe shop. now. Bring the van on up. Will do. Also, Matt, the NATO guys, they've kicked in all the doors. You're free to search inside the buildings now. Got it. At least I can get out of the fucking rain. I'll come find you in a bit. Have fun reminiscing. Yeah, we sure will have fun. But alright, what was I about to say? Oh yeah, let's have a quick look. So, the wrecked guerrilla armory, the carpenter's shop and the church grounds, we are gonna go to these places and take a look. And we are also still searching explosives. So that we can disarm them later when a toolkit arrives. Do we have a new timeline entry here? We do... May 28th of 2034. NATO performs a successful airdrop after the supplies are secured by armed forces. IDEP collects them and distributes the much needed aid in Oreo Castle. That's the mission that we have played before this one, where we played Staff Sergeant Adams as the guy coordinating the airdrop. And now we are back August 17th, 2035. What else do we have? Oh, we have a few memories. We can read their transcripts. Okay, that's nice. Let's continue to the armory. Let's see if we can now get inside. Ah, the entrance still seems to be blocked. What a mess. Loose rubble everywhere. You up at the armory, Mac? We need to make a note to sort that shit out. Probably a whole bunch of ordnance lying around. I'll come back later. Let's not forget this cluster bomblet up there on the roof. Don't want to get anywhere near that thing. Doesn't look like we can take another entrance to the armory. Not really. Okay then, if that's the case, let's continue to the carpenter's house by... Yeah, by following these houses along the edge of the village here. The weather is once again pretty bad. Although the sun is starting to burn the clouds, so maybe we'll get some nice weather later on. But I gotta say, in the retrospective episodes, where we have a look at the past, the weather has been usually quite good and the view from up here has been breathtaking. Let's check out the houses. Let's see if we find any interesting remains inside. Well, smashed up furniture, rubble. What happened here? Looks almost like an improvised operating table. The first aid station. IDEP supplies. Some flyers and leaflets. Mysterious disappearance of all furniture. Yeah, okay. The developers have a sense of humor after all. Let's take a quick look upstairs. But I don't think we'll find anything interesting in this house. No. Everything's just smashed up. Let's continue on to the next one. We have to be careful all the time. So that we don't run into any unexploded ordnance. But so far so good. Let's follow this path up here. Should bring us towards the carpenter's house. Shouldn't be 
too far. I think it might be that one up there. Let's go over that way. I'll take a quick peek inside this building. I hear something. The memories, quote unquote, that are available to play, they're emitting a humming noise. And yeah, there was one here. Whole families, you know. What's that, Nathan? Sorry, I'm I'm talking to myself. Old habit, just this whole mess. The war. Everything. I focus on my work, get the job done, but now and again, it's hard not to think what happened to the folks here. Not so nice things, I would imagine. Looks like people were living a peaceful life. A calm and peaceful life. Before the whole mess started. Before everything went to shit. That's usually the thing, isn't it? One day you have a normal and stable country, a happy life. Suddenly it comes to this. That's basically humanity's history, isn't it? Conflict. Always conflict. Even today we have terrible conflict. Right at the edge of Europe. And for what? Pure madness. Okay. We can proceed over there. Uh, wait, no, the carpenter's house is to our left now. Let's go there. There's also another memory that can be visited in this house over here. We'll go there in just a few moments. We have already seen this one. Well, let's investigate the carpenter's house here. Is there anything interesting inside? Apart from a mine buried somewhere. Let's see, the doorway is not what's mined. Ah, yeah. This is a cluster mm. bomblet in the I wall. I got a UXO here, dug right into the wall. Shit. You'll need the toolkit for that job. I'll get on the horn to dispatch. See what's taking him so long. I'll come back later. I don't want to disturb it by going past it. That might be dangerous. So we are not doing that. We are... We still have to go to the church grounds, but I'll visit the mayor's house first. The abandoned AAF post, which just popped up as a task. A barricade. Nice barricade that someone built. I'm sure we'll learn about that and oh, won't be long. There was an unexploded... Yeah, there's a cluster bomblet there on the ground. The IDAP camp over there in the distance, where we stopped on the way to the town. Morning! You been in? You kidding me? I ain't going in there, man. That shit's all yours. Where are you now? Who, me? I'm exploring. I can hear an echo. Yeah, I'm in what used to be the mayor's place, actually. At least it was before the government forces took it over. Did we have a look at this one? Tell me more about Staff Sergeant Adams. You met him on a previous deployment. That must have been in Generous, right? Mm, no, actually, this was after I'd left the military. Previous deployment with IDAP. Pakistan. It must have been... God, 15 years ago? I think. Feels like another lifetime. Teaching the AAF about... what? about what is legal and illegal in armed conflict. Integration of law, conduct of operations, weapons, command responsibility, etc, etc. Did you pay attention? 
Doesn't look like it. Respect civilian property. We have a gym and an armory next door. Maybe we should check those out. Ah, uh, the door is locked. Let's go. Let's have a look upstairs. See what this place... Ah, oh, we can't. We can only see it in its current state. It's not looking good. Okay, here we can advance to the next episode. I'm not doing that yet. We'll come back. We'll come back to this place once we have been up to the church. So this here was the armory. Let's not go. N let's not go near that thing there on the ground. What is left of the armory? A few boxes. Nothing that can be used. Spilled fuel. This was a gym. We have a memory here. Did we play this one already? I don't think we have. My understanding of NATO's actions, particularly against the guerrillas, it's patchy. Maybe you could help fill the gaps? Sure. Well, uh, aside from the odd direct engagement, it was mostly aerial support. Drone strikes. Of course, that all came from the airbase. The one on Stratus. I see. Not Altis. No. Even before they were forced to leave, their presence on the mainland didn't stack up to much. Okay. Let's go up the road then. So many memories in this one place. So much to see and to learn about the history of it all. Simply about how it came to be like this. And what I find fascinating is the very harsh contrast. They did a really good job with that, the developers. This harsh contrast between what the village looks like now and what this little town has looked like in more peaceful times. The contrast is extreme, almost. Very much so indeed. Is this a new memory here? Yeah. No, I think we have seen that one already. Yes, we have. Andy! Can we go in? Yep. Sup? What's the deal with the church? Can we get in or what? Sorry, Mac. No dice. NATO's got first dibs. They're bringing their boys home. Bag and tag. Let's leave them to it. i come back later. They're still busy. Okay. Can't do anything. And the area is heavily mined. Which one of these houses had another memory scene inside of it? Also, did I bother to investigate this house over here? I don't think I did. So let's have a quick look inside. Doesn't seem to be anything in here. No. Nothing. Alright then. Let's go down this road. I think it was this house. 
that we should have a look at. So let's do that. The door is open. How had things deteriorated so quickly? I mean, Altis is not exactly third world, yet food became scarce. It's the little things. A local delivery stops, trawler is damaged, farmland gets mined. It's an almost imperceptible but fragile network. So when war comes, things just fall apart. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Life looks like it's okay and... You know, it just goes on day after day. Nothing terrible happens. But an unstable political climate can suddenly turn into something very nasty. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take too much, really. There's another scene for us here. Another memory to be unlocked. Our camp in the town, I still remember it clear as day. Were there many of you? From IDAP? No, not really. Four, maybe. Sometimes a couple more, depending on what we had going on. It was mainly logistics, but we did have a doctor and an ambulance. A nice little aid camp in the center of the town. Nothing left of it. Okay, do we now go towards the mayor's house again? We do. We'll have a quick stop along the way. Let's not step on that thing. Another evil little thing that we have to worry about. So, Nathan, may I ask, when you first came to Oreo Castro, what were you doing there? IDAP asked me to give some talks on landmines. Talks? Who with? Anyone who'd listen, really. It was all about raising awareness. Didn't do much good. Okay. I think we have completed our tour of the town for now. We are going... No, there is actually something else in this house over here that we can take a look at. So let's do that before we go on. The scenes that you haven't seen are marked in yellow on the map. So let's have a quick look. I think it's upstairs, by the sound of it. Yeah, there it is. Going back to what I said about the people here, their support for the guerrillas, sometimes it was a lot more than food and water. What, guns? Yeah, even after the government troops arrived, garrisoned their mayor's house, folks were still doing all they could for the cause. Hiding guerrillas. Sheltering them. I wonder how the guerrillas repaid that kindness. Oh wow. Okay. I think now we have seen everything that is there to see at the moment. Let's go the mayor's house and let's advance to the next chapter the next chapter that will give us more insight about how this place became a guerrilla stronghold
Here we are. There's still time to surrender. Cease resistance. Further acts of aggression against the Altus armed forces will be the death of you. I got a leaflet here. The army must have scattered thousands of these. Propaganda. Something like that. This one says, there's still time to surrender. Maybe a bad choice of words, considering. Time to surrender? What's the context here? Well, this was last year, September. These leaflets, they were dropped maybe a day before the fighting began. You see, the guerrillas there, they'd found themselves a new leader. Charismatic, ex-military. For him, this was no time to surrender. Far from it. In fact, he used that time to rally his people, encourage them to resist, build defenses. Meanwhile, the army was setting up for a major offensive. The attack on Oreo Castro, it was no secret. Of course, after the leaflet dropped, IDAP started to pull out of the town. So the little I do know, well, that brings us back to the brother, the one who disappeared. Right. Now we are playing as this guy. A gorilla, by the looks of it. And that flag up there does not belong to the Altus Armed Forces. This is the FIA flag. The gorilla flag. His name was Alexis. He volunteered to build a barricade. Town was his home, after all. Yeah, there's still no barricade. We are going to build it now. Well, let's first take a look at these leaflets that were dropped by that drone. So, these leaflets, they were a warning to the town. Yeah, they confirmed the offensive. The government was concerned about civilian casualties. Don't sound too surprised. So, NATO's message, do you think it was getting through? I mean, according to the laws of armed conflict, that's the principle of precaution, right? Sure. Maybe. Or maybe they were just sick of all the extra paperwork. There's still time to surrender. Cease resistance. Further ac acts of aggression against Altus armed forces will be the death of you. What a nice message to the people of the town. Looks like the place is being turned into a fortress. That up there must be the most flamboyant gorilla I have ever seen. Awesome pants, dude. That thing has been turned into a fortress, by God. And look, I can't get through here. Yeah, okay. By that point, the gorillas were short on vehicles, damaged, destroyed, or otherwise. They had to improvise. Look who we have here. We know this guy. If you have watched the Alexis Eastern campaign... lived in a workshop. During the attack, he let his comrades set up a position there. He put his home right in the line of fire. Quite a sacrifice. Let's have a quick look. Signals, blue, open fire, green, cease fire, red, retreat. Village of Odeo Castro. The church. IDAP, okay. Strong point. I think this is where we are. Armory, mines, UAV bomb. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Let's take a look upstairs. See what we have going on in here. Ho 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 Will you look at that? A drone with explosives. That's the UAV bomb. This place is being turned into a workshop for ammunition production, apparently. And into a barracks. Maybe... Medical station. By all accounts, they were getting pretty desperate. Yeah, that's... Perfectly good military gear that you have there. Jesus Christ, the guerrillas in the early days, I mean... 
Improvisation, right? A very important skill. More guys up there. They really are turning this place into a fortress. At what point did things become unsafe in the center of town? Well, I'm not sure it was ever completely safe. Even before things escalated, we were concerned about being accidentally targeted. And to be honest, it didn't matter where we moved. That always remained a concern. Yeah, Idep has apparently pulled out of here. Machine gun position up there on the roof. I'm looking for cars. I am looking for cars. There's a van. We can use that. For the barricade. Let's take a quick look inside. Do you think Alexis, I don't know, thought twice about taking these vehicles? Look, sure. These were his neighbors, but this was their home. And it was under attack. What would you do? Yeah, good point. There's another car inside the garage. We are going for that one next. Let's first bring this van down to the barricade and use it to set up the first part. Help me out with some context here. This barricade. I mean, it was crude, right? A gap between two outcrops of rock, natural bottleneck. The gorillas hoped to block the road by jamming it with vehicles. As for the vehicles in the barricade, the commission actually linked the plates to a number of locals. Of course, several were still missing after the incident, so the investigation made some assumptions. Okay. We can leave this one here. That looks about right. There's still room behind the vehicle, so we should park something else there. Maybe the car that we saw up at the garage. But you know what? I actually forgot to take a look here what we have to do. So, we have to search the town for a few civilian cars and park them between the two cliffs at the entrance to the town. There's a hatchback that we can use. The one in, in the garage up there, actually. Briefing. We have a new entry in the timeline. September. As relations between AIF and NATO deteriorate, peacekeeping forces on Altus are ordered to relocate to Stratus. Guerrillas overrun an AAF outpost in Odeo Castle, and a large if number I of weapons it, are captured. You know about what happened through the brother. Alexis, was it? Did you meet him? Not directly, but you know, it's a small town, right? People knew Alexis. After what happened here, I talked to the locals, found out what I could. The rest of what I know is pieced together from the commission report itself. Actually, that incident report, the evidence you submitted. That's partly why I asked for the interview. I want to gain a, a human perspective. <laughs> well, that's understandable. I mean, for a humanitarian commission, those reports tend to be... Um... A little detached, yes. If you look carefully towards the castle, we can see the gorilla flag on the rampart there, on the castle walls. So I guess there's maybe another guerrilla. Yeah, there's even a soldier up there on the wall. So I guess some guys are stationed up there. It's a good position. Overlooking the surrounding area. Okay, let's take this car. You know what, let's first take a look at the church. What's going on here? Shot up ambulance. Oh yeah, very much shot up. I'm not taking the ambulance, that wouldn't be right. Just to be sure on the timeline here, had IDEP left before the offensive began? Like I said, we were pulling out, but no, not completely. We moved our camp to the church. Temporary arrangement. So, just to clarify, in your email you said you served as a combat engineer, the Marine Corps? That's right. South Zagoria, Generous. 
then it's fair to say you're no stranger to the um, subject of my article, the laws of armed conflict. I've uh, seen a few things, heard stories. It's rarely been, you know, clear-cut, right and wrong. Oh, absolutely. That's why it's so important to gain your perspective. You've seen things from both sides. I mean, now as an NGO, too. Sure, yeah. All right, let's bring the car to the barricade and then we have to find another one. <laughs> Sorry, I, sh I shouldn't laugh. Just, I was thinking, even took a local priest's car. I remember I was talking to Father Georgiopoulos and he was actually very uh, good about the whole thing. How so? Something about rich men and camels. So this is the priest's car? The priest likes a sporty car, apparently. Okay, let's try to squeeze this in behind the van here. If I can manage that. And let's maneuver a little bit back and forth. Oops. Yeah, this is wedged in. This is good. Tightly wedged in, this isn't going anywhere. Exactly what I want. So we need another car to block off this side. Let's see where we can find one. Oh! Hey, just a thought, you remember the earthquakes back then? Yeah, they were quite frequent. Well, I'd at all concerned about that. Oh yeah. Any kind of disaster relief on top of what we were dealing with. It would have just about finished us off completely. The earthquakes. Remember, at this point, as we just saw here in the briefing, NATO soldiers are off the island. CSAT has taken over. And, well, if you have watched my Eastern campaign videos, then you know that CSAT has been experimenting with some strange earthquake devices on this island. They are to blame for the earthquakes. What else do we have here? Anything interesting inside this house, maybe? Uh, just a whole bunch of rubbish. Let's go this way, then. Let's take a look at these defenses that the guerrillas are building. Machine gun position up there. What's happening here? Weapons training. Looks like the guy on the right is probably a deserter from the army. Just looking at his attire and the fact that he is apparently the one training these guys. And then you have very obviously civilians. Civilians who never wanted to harm anyone in their life. I never thought it would come to something like this. Don't look at me. <laughs> Let's continue. What do we have here? What do we have here? Just a normal house. Just a normal building. Not converted into a strong point. I got it. But definitely in use by the guerrillas. Alexis knew the town well, of course. We have an SUV nearby, apparently. Yeah, one guy watching out for the AF. I guess at this point the AF surely has people out there in the hills watching the town seeing all these preparations that's why they are dropping these leaflets giving the people one last chance to surrender before they move in right hey this is a weak spot guys we should take care of this Oh, 
look at that. Yeah, good position to cover the roads. Very exposed though. Interesting conversations. We can take a look at the armory while it was still intact. How well armed were these guerrillas? Couldn't say for sure. Varied from place to place. There was actually an armory in a building on the west side of the town, though. It's somewhere we still need to investigate once we find a way in. Looks like they had some good weapons. And well, RPGs. The RPG. The. Uh, let's say resistance fighter multi tool of the world. There's a car. Let's take it. Ah, shut up. These vehicles. I suppose all of them were taken without consent. Well, yeah, given the circumstances. The owners couldn't exactly refuse. Right, but that's the thing. Never mind theft being illegal. The laws of armed conflict prohibit such actions. Yeah. And since when do... Well, basically civilians that are trying to defend their homes. Since when do they care about something like that? Let me get the car in there nicely. I want to park it just the way it has to be parked to resemble what it looks like later. Let's jam it in here. Yeah, that's good. After Alexis built the barricade, what then? Did he stay inside the town? No. That's where the story gets more complicated. The barricade itself was later chained up and set on fire by someone else. I don't know quite who. Alexis, he headed west to lay mine. We have to go down the road and take care of a minefield. You know what that means, don't you? The minefield that we saw laid down on the roads um, at the start of this campaign. Anti-tank mines were already in the ground. If there's no pull fuse, and so long as they've not been stacked, they aren't too hard to remove. But Alexis, although he didn't use anti-handling devices, he did create a hybrid minefield. AT mines. Mixed with APs. That's it, yeah. He put anti-personnel mines around the anti-tank ones, made clearance all that much harder. Devious idea. Imagine that you're an AF combat engineer tasked with clearing that minefield. Well, good luck. You can't really open up the way for vehicles without exposing yourself to the danger of anti-personnel mines. Or by possibly being under fire from the town above you. These mines, how did they get hold of them? That's a good question. That's a really damn good question. They got them when the government's outposts fell into guerrilla hands. Oh. Bounding mines. A type that leaps up a meter into the air before exploding. Nasty stuff. Hell, nowadays they're even made with plastic casing to throw off older types of mine detector. Mm, lovely. Oh yeah, just do yourself a favor. Don't look up bouncing Betty injuries online. Don't. I know what you're thinking. Don't. I see that there are already some anti-personnel mines on the ground. I have to be careful. 
and our task tells us to place the anti-personnel mines within a meter or two of already placed anti-tank mines. So let's try to do that. There's one. There's another one down there. We can, you can see which ones are AP mines and which ones are anti-tank mines. These ones that have little horns are anti-personnel mines. How many do I have to place? Seven. Now, I should uh, tell you something right now. I am using the ACE mod, but I have disabled the um, ACE Explosives PBO by simply removing it from the mod folder for this mission. Because otherwise you are not <laughs> able to complete there. this objective. Mm -hmm. And not for long. We're setting up our demining drones as we speak. Let's put one here. Nasty little shits. Let's see. Do we have mines up here? No, we don't. We have some anti vehicle mines on this piece, on this part of the road up here. So let's put a few mines next to these ones. Nice. Another damn earthquake. Shit. You know, thinking about it, even if we had a record of where Alexis's mines were, it may not do much good. No? I thought minefield maps were a key part of your work. Most folks don't realize, but landmines, they don't stay put. Heavy rain, landslides, keeping a map current. Ain't so simple. And with all the earthquakes in this region, there's little chance they'd all be in the same place. I don't know. Maybe just Gallo's humor, but we've got an expression for that. Landmines have legs. That's terrifying. That's absolutely terrifying. I have to consult my map. Make sure that we are not walking into something nasty. There should be an anti-vehicle mine right here that still hasn't had an anti-personnel mine next to it. This one. Jesus Christ. Never thought of that. That landmines are simply not staying where they are, have been put. They can move. We have three more. Where do I put those? Oh boy. We can put some here on the outskirts, and there's another outlier up here. Let's go that way, but I have to be careful because of this one. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Should be an anti vehicle mine somewhere nearby. Can I find it though? Not really. I walked past it. Ah, there it is. Oh, wow. Okay, where was the interpersonal mine? There. Let's not go there. Let's put one here. I'll put another one next to this one. And then we'll move back up the road. to lay down the last mine on the other side of the minefield. Let's see... Mine is somewhere to my left. We have another one here in front of us. Don't explode. Mines are making me nervous. Uh, nothing happens. Good. <laughs> can I get safely to this side up to that mine? Yeah, I can. There should be an anti-vehicle mine right here somewhere. Right in front of us. There it is. Let's put our last mine here. Alexis proved to be quite the combat engineer. He placed the mines exactly as he'd been shown. So, moving on, where did Alexis go next? He took a quad bike up to the castle behind the town. 
let's do that then. A castle? Why? He was needed at Gorilla's base camp. Okay. His group been running things from up at the castle. Mm-hmm. And I see what you're getting at. Yeah, Geneva Conventions, cultural objects, I think. Quick question. Didn't I just block the wheel? Oh, what the hell? Okay, somebody already set the barricade on fire. The barricade? There wasn't any way around it then? From the road? No, well, not unless you cut through the compound. Which we can do on our quad bike. Isn't it a bit too early to set everything on fire? We go here. We can progress towards the castle. So the gorilla base camp is up at the castle. Is there any other objective that we have to complete in the town, by the way? No, we just have to get up to the castle. Maybe a technical question. Go ahead. In these situations, do those involved commonly record the locations of minefields? That's a tough one. Take this situation, for example. I'm convinced Alexis would have made a record. It's his home, after all. But do we have access to that information? No. And that's a problem. Things, information, people, landmines, they get lost in the fog of war. But that's the thing about landmines. Lost or not, they stick around. They wait to be found. Can you imagine how many mines have already been laid down in Ukraine? Can you imagine what kind of cleanup effort that would require when the war is over one day? Before those uh, those beautiful fields can be used again to farm. Where exactly do I have to go? Oh, just up in the car into the castle directly, okay. Guess I'm leaving my quad bike here then. Let's leave the quad bike and find a way up into the castle keep. Maybe we have to go down here. Yeah, just imagine what kind of cleanup effort is required for Ukraine. It will take decades. I mean, look at look at the Balkan and the uh, countries there, Bosnia, Croatia. There are still minefields out there. Minefields that haven't been cleaned up even decades after the war. Thornos Castle. Ooh, a bit of history. That's nice. Above, Roman soldiers besieging the fortress, which predates the current castle ruins. Although the outer walls were breached, the defenders were saved at the 11th hour when home forces in Carthage capitulated. Both the castle you see today and the ancient Phoenician fortress which stood here before it occupy a prestigious place in the annuals of military history. Neither have ever been captured by force of arms. Many great empires have tried, from Roman legionnaires and barbarians to Saracen raiders and Ottoman Turks. Numerous armies have attempted to seize this site and failed. However, according to the Greek historian Strabo, there may yet be another chapter in this story waiting to be written, in his histories. He tells of an enigmatic prophecy, whereby three servants of a mighty Hexat shall descend from Jove to conquer the castle in a night of fire. Hexat. Interesting expression. So something about the history of Altus really. 980 before Christ, Altus becomes a Phoenician colony and the castle is established on Mount Thornos. 332 before Christ, Phoenicia falls to the Persian Empire, Altus comes under the control of Carthage. First Punic War, Rome fails to capture the fortress atop Mount Thronos despite a six-year siege. So that's where we are right now. 464 to 454 after Christ, after the birth of our Lord and Savior, etc. etc. Roman influence declines, Altus attacked by the Vandals. 
In 533, Altus is conquered by the Byzantine Empire. A permanent Greek settlement is founded on the site of modern-day Odeo Castro. 889. Arab-Byzantine Wars. Altus is raided by Saracens from Arabia. 891. Massive earthquake. The ancient fortress on Thornos is totally destroyed. Arabian warlords built a smaller castle on its remains. Byzantine resurgence. Altus reclaimed by Christendom despite a heroic Muslim defense at Thornos. 1493. Fourth Crusade. Altus are portioned to the Latin Empire and given as a fiefdom to the Republic of Venice. 1552. Altus invaded by the Ottoman Empire. Byzantine Greeks wage a long and bloody war of resistance. 1963. Massive earthquake. Thornos Castle suffers extensive damage and many are killed in the neighboring town of Odeo Castro. Well, and these are now the ruins of the castle. Beautiful view on the town though. And on the surrounding hillsides, even on the sea. Let's get up there. Let's go into the keep. Cultural property. Do you feel these preparations made a difference? In the short term? I do, yeah. The barricade held. The government's tanks were knocked out on the road. And in the long term? I'd, uh, I'd go on, but as you may have heard, it's getting kind of loud here. <laughs> By the sounds of it, you've got your hands full. Uh, this will only take a minute. Be right back. Bet you wish we had one of those in Pakistan, huh? I gotta admit, that season tons of getting shit done. By the way, while you were busy chatting to, uh, well, whoever that is that isn't your wife... I told you, Andy, she's a journalist. Get to the point. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, I assembled the demining drones. Both of them? Uh, well, yeah. They're by the van. And that? That is something that we'll explore next time. Demining drones? That sounds exciting. I gotta admit, I half expected that vehicle to suddenly fly off into the sky due to Arma 3's physics. <laughs> that would have been quite hilarious. But fortunately it didn't happen. Alright, we'll continue this campaign next time. When we will... My guess is we'll start to demine some of these explosives in the town. And then we might have a look at the perspective of somebody else, because this campaign puts us into the shoes of different people that played a role in these events. So, I hope that you have enjoyed today's episode, even though we didn't get to shoot anyone. But the big shooting can't be far away, so you have that to look forward to. For now, I want to thank you very much for watching, make sure you have subscribed to the channel, and I hope to see you again next time. Until then, have some really great days and goodbye.